Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of the 10 things, <laughs> you can tell to see if a guy is avoidant or secure. I just want to share something personal because this keeps coming up on my channel and I just think it's kind of funny. Um, folks, I do not color my hair. I do have some gray hair here. See right here? There is some gray, but I don't color my hair. I just got blessed. I, I thanked my mommy and daddy for that, um, or genetics or whatnot. So for those of you that keep continually bringing it up on my channel, I do not color my hair. All right. Let's talk about avoidant and secure and anxious attachment style. Now, it's interesting. Folks, some of you, this may be new information, so I, I invite you to Google a book I'm going to share with you in a moment um, to get a better understanding of what this is all about, because I'll be quite frank with you. Um, when I think back, before I began studying relationships, before I began studying how to be in a healthy, happy relationship, before I began studying dating a relationship and mating and such like that, I was rather clueless to the understanding of why we choose people the way we do. I just thought that it was if you had great chemistry with someone that magically your relationship will just work out fine. Let me repeat that. I thought if I had chemistry with someone, magically it'd work out fine. Now, I didn't think of it as magically. I just thought that's the way it was supposed to be, that when two people had great chemistry for one another and there was, um, you know, that's all you needed to make a relationship work. Now, I was in my 20s when I thought that. So sure enough, like many people like myself, I met somebody, had chemistry with them. We grew up in the same, relatively close to the same city. We had mutual friends. So it just was naturally going to work out. And I didn't understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, what it takes to make a healthy, happy relationship. I was rather clueless when I got married in my late 20s. I was really clueless what it meant to be a good husband and what it meant to actually lean into a relationship. And I say clueless, I, I not, I really was clueless. You know, I, I really didn't understand what it took to be a good husband other than the programming I had to be a provider protector. That was the programming. That was the biological programming. And I know how you all hear that men are provider protectors. But what's missing in that provider protector piece is an understanding of real connection at an emotional level. So while many of you, you know, um, gravitate to that narrative that men are supposed to do this, that we're biologically supposed to do this, guess what? We might do it. And by the way, as we age, and what I mean by age, a significant percentage of men after divorce, the last thing they want to do is be a provider protector for someone. So be careful of, of following that narrative, when, especially for those of you who are in midlife, as a pathway to relationship success. And be careful of the other narrative that men are hunters and they're supposed to chase you and claim you and you just sit back in your feminine energy and you don't have to do anything. That's another narrative that doesn't work. I mean, yes, it might temporarily work to for a guy to trigger to chase you, but what are men chasing most of the time if in the beginning stages of a relationship? If they're chasing sex. So be careful of those narratives. The more important narratives to understand is something known as love attachment style. Love attachment style. I didn't know this until I began studying this. And if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend reading the book attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. This is an amazing book. There, there's so many other books you can read. Hold me tight. Um, God, there's so many. Uh, go Google this book and then you can or go to Amazon. By the way, there's a link below to get all the books I recommend. So there's, um, and then go surf uh, Amazon for the variety of books related to this. Because when you understand this now, some of you saw the title around avoidant and secure men. And we're going to lean into what really makes a man secure. How does a man show up secure in relationship? Now, many of you might be what's known. Okay, so let me go back to anxious, the, the three primary love attachment styles. And there's variations within each primary. There's anxious, there's avoidant, and then there's secure. Anxious, avoidant, secure. Now, anxious tend to be the needy people. They 
Um, they desire closeness. And I believe that this happens, uh, when I say believe, the way I interpret it from the books and such that I've read, is that this really centers to when you're anxious as a little child, um, there was a, um, there was, um, I've got a, um, a lack of love going on and there was a, a crying need to get loved by your parents, okay? And because there was space, there was this need to get closeness and then it created uh, an anxious um, emotion with inside of a child. And this is all childhood stuff. The avoidant, when they were a separation from, the word I was looking for was separation, by the way, when there was separation from their parents of love, they learned to kind of go inward go inward and not trust love. This is just my interpretation of it. And the secure child, when there was separation from the parent, just learned to self-soothe and take care of themselves. They actually learn how to love themselves. Now, while I believe um, in the book, it says that a significant percentage of the population is secure. I don't believe that. I think we're either anxious or avoidant as a default and through experience can a relationship be, uh, through experiences can someone become secure in relationship and i'm going to share with you what it looks like to be in a secure relationship so understanding these love attachment styles anxious avoidant secure now many women tend to be more anxious and what's interesting is i can relate to an anxious attachment style now, where my anxious attach, and what means is, I, it's kind of the Jerry Maguire thing. I, you know, there's a hole inside of me. Oh, there's my t-shirt. Life moves pretty fast, if you know the Ferris Bueller line. But there's a hole inside of me, and someone else needs to fill it kind of thing. And, I, and I'm, I'm almost in a desperate place of needing that, or at least that's been my default for a long time. And I, I believe where this stems from is my mother, when I was growing up, my mother would give love to all of us. And then whenever she got mad at my dad, my brother, my sister, myself, she would withdraw from the family. She would go stonewall. She would go stone cold. And I want you to imagine as a child here, your parent, you know, is supposed to be the one that loves you. And then they go stone cold on you. And then I took it personally as if something was wrong with me. And what happens is happened for me significantly is I tended to choose women like my mother that would go stone cold on me. Now, if you're not familiar with the work of Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, I highly recommend checking this book out called Getting the Love You Want. Getting the Love You Want. Why you want to read this book as well is you're going to want to learn about something known as the Imago. I M A G O. Imago. Why I'm bringing this up is if you have a pattern of choosing the certain type of men or people in your life, they might actually represent one or both of your parents. And what I mean to say is when I said earlier, I was choosing my mother because that's what was familiar to me, to be with women who would emotionally withdraw from me, or stonewall from me, or be emotionally unavailable. So there's two things going on. There's our attachment style, the style that we attach to another person. And then there's the imago, which is usually a reflection of choosing people like our parents. So if you notice that if you have a pattern of choosing a certain type of man or a certain type of person in your life over and over again, you might examine where this came from within your childhood. So I tended to choose avoidance. Avoidance to me are people that are desperately, they, they desperately want love. They really desperately, when I say desperately, on, a, on an unconscious level, they desperately want love. The hard part is they don't trust love. They really don't trust love. Now, I have a belief that it's harder to make an avoidance secure than it is the other way around. I, and that's just my speculation on it. So don't quote me on that. That's just, I, and yet here's the thing. If a person is too far gone avoidant, it's going to be difficult to have them lean into a secure relationship. You as a person, if you're an anxious attachment style person with an avoidant, it's going to be really hard to shift that person. I think it's probably easier to shift an anxious person more to secure than the other way around. But if they are at the extreme ends of the two, 
most likely it's going to be difficult. You're going to have to find those people that are closer in the middle. Now, what do those people look like that are in the middle? I believe these are people that have invested in some level of introspective work or personal development, self-help, or spiritual work. If you're not familiar with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Again, there's a link below. This is a journey to, and, and by the way, why I'm sharing my book, which I share it for in every video, is that in the back of the book, there's an outline of what took me to get a better understanding of myself and relationships, a lot of introspective work. And at the same time, it's, a, I believe, a great guide, to, like I said, there's for others to begin to maybe move closer to that middle section of being able to lean into a potentially secure relationship. So what does a secure relationship look like? What would a secure attachment style guy look like? Well, we're gonna we're going to explore that. And by the way, here's my notes. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> now, I want to share with you this actual uh, the idea for this video actually came while I was watching a TikTok video of someone else. So I want to be candid with you. What I'm sharing, and I don't, I I swiped through it, and I didn't save uh, his uh, his such uh, his channel so I could share it with you. But he shared uh, he shared eleven uh, things. I actually felt like uh, 10 were the most important of these 11 or of his content, but to how to know you're with a secure guy. Okay. Number one, he's reliable and he's consistent. He's reliable and consistent. Do you remember in My Fair Lady, words, 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 if you love me, show me. I believe that being reliable and consistent is a factor of being in a person, being with someone who can lean into a secure attachment style, someone who is reliable and consistent. Number two, he makes decisions with you. You know, when I think of my marriage, I didn't make decisions with my wife, but then I was in a different place in my life. But if you're in a relationship with someone, maybe you're talking about Maybe you're talking about moving in together. Maybe you're talking about going to a show. Maybe you're, there's something going on in his life that could affect your life. Maybe it has to do with an ex-spouse. Maybe it has to do with their children. This is a person that's transparent. In other words, if it's material to the relationship, they're going to bring it to your attention and discuss it with you because they want to make it. It's, they recognize the value you place in their life and they make decisions with you. I think that's a really important piece. They value the importance that you have to their life. You know, sadly, these days, most people are dating. They call it a relationship, but they're really just, they're just spending time with each other. It's just, you know, I call these men the spenders. They want companionship, connection, and sex without any real level of deeper commitment to something beyond just spending time. These are the, the men that want deeper commitment are what I call the growers and the builders. And, and, and many of you are experiencing what I call the spenders. They want companionship, connection, and sex without any real commitment. And worse, some of you are experiencing what I call the users. These are the men, the love bombers that come on strong. It's only for their own needs. So how do you differentiate it? These are the men that actually make decisions with you. They, they bring you into that, their life because they recognize you're a material part to their life. Okay? Number three, he doesn't play games. He's not dysfunctional. Oh my God, this game playing that I'm seeing so much dating advice out there is, is designed to, is, is really designed to play games and trigger, trigger our unhealthy emotions. You know, I'm, I'm witnessing video after video out in the, in the YouTube uh, universe. All, you know, the book, The Rules was designed to trigger our unhealthy stuff, which yes, temporarily works. It temporarily works, but it's not going to work for the long run. So what's the point of playing games if it's not going to... Now, part of where a lot of you ladies get confused on the games. Remember I spoke earlier about being clueless? Here's the thing. 
I think most men are good human beings. I don't think they intentionally play games. It's just we have become such a self-centric society here in the United States. Let me repeat that. We've become such a self-centric society. A lot of times it, it's known as narcissism, but it's just a myopic sense of self without any real regard for the other person. Ladies, you do this and men do this too. It's all about individual pleasure. Oops. Individual pleasure, in other words, individual needs and not necessarily the collective needs. So a man differentiating the avoidant and the secure, the man who's leaning into being a secure doesn't play games. Okay. Number four, he communicates relationship issues well. He communicates really. This is a person who's evolved because they most likely either, you know, I'm going to say one of the things you may want to consider as um, you may want to consider choosing men who read books, who read books, who regularly read books and not just, you know, the Tom Clancy novels per se, but a variety of books, people that are tend to read and study people who read or study things tend to be a, a little bit better equipped at communicate being communicating their the they're communicating their thoughts and needs in a way that's seen heard and understood so a man who's more secure communicates relationship issues well now what i mean is perfectly well no because ladies you're not necessarily so great at this either just because you can vomit your feelings doesn't mean it comes across well okay but for the most part, they're, they're better than the average, okay? They're better than the norm. Number five, they can reach a compromise during arguments. Conflict resolution skills is one of the most important aspects of a relationship. If you're not familiar with the book, uh, Eight Dates by Doctors John and Julie Gottman, there is a whole chapter. Chapter two is centered around, it's called Agree to Disagree, Agree to Disagree addressing conflicts, being able to compromise. In other words, instead of operating from a place of I'm right and you're wrong, a secure person recognizes I'd rather be happy than to be right. And by the way, everything I'm sharing here, you have to do the same thing too. If you want to be a secure, you have to operate from this place as well. So, um, can reach a compromise during arguments. Number six, they're not afraid of commitment or dependency. I'm not sure I like the word dependency, but they're not afraid of commitment or attachment to another person. They actually want to lean into it. So when you come across those guys, let me take it slow. I just need to be casual. I'm not looking for anything serious. That's because they're avoiding the real understanding of what it takes to build the roots of trust to a healthy, happy relationship. Now, is this resonating with you folks? Is this, is this, have you experienced any of this? Post a comment below if you have. If you're liking the content so far, hit that thumbs up. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. Number seven, they don't view relationships as hard work. Listen, I know some people who are addicted to the drama within a relationship, a secure attachment person isn't addicted to the drama. They actually recognize that when you find a person that shares your values, whose lifestyles are blendable, where you have that chemistry and they're emotionally mature, a relationship is going to be work. The work is individual work, but the relationship itself isn't meant to be a struggle or a chore. The minute it's a struggle or a chore, they're like, hey, I'm done with this because I don't want to choose a partner that's addicted to the drama. Number eight, Closeness creates further closeness. In other words, a secure man wants to get closer and closer and closer to you on an emotional level. I didn't bring up the book called Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, but I highly recommend, it's in the link below, I highly recommend checking that out because a man who's secure, he, he moves towards closeness. Number nine, he introduces you to his family and friends. He wants to invite you into his life that's, a, that's saying you're important to me. I want to introduce you to my life. And, natu and lastly, he naturally expresses feelings for you. It's not like you're pulling his teeth 
to get him to express his feelings. He genuinely wants to express how he feels about this relationship. And these are just 10 signs to, 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 to really observe is my relationship with this person reaching a level, those deep roots of trust, that's going to take us from just being mediocre to that juicy, delicious relationship I often talk about in many of my videos. So is he avoidant? Is he secure? I think I've given you 10 ways to determine. Here's what you can do if he's not. You can choose to either be silent in your relationship or you can lean into deeper intimacy by having deeper conversations with your partner instead of the, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. That's from Seinfeld. That's Kramer from Seinfeld. I invite you to do that because what's the point of getting into a relationship if you can't experience the real juicy, delicious parts, which is that emotional connection with a partner. So God, universe, spirit, I invite a partner in where we have that mutual chemistry with one another. And we have that level of communication where we express our feelings with one another in a healthy, happy way. And we have lifestyles that are blendable with one another. And we share the same values that allows us our relationship to flourish and grow. And lastly, we build the deep roots of trust through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our professional and personal life, and an intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy. Because what's the point of being in a relationship if you can't have that physical connection with a partner? God, universe, spirit, I invite that in. And I invite that in for you as well. Is he avoidant and secure? I think I've given you some food for thought. And if I have, let me know if this is resonating with you by saying it in the comments below and sharing this with your friends and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Here's a teddy bear. And give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. Let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.